Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 93 of the Pika Australia podcast. I am one of your hosts, Emilson, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Anomaly. Hello. Uh, and this week, we're going to be talking about time walking, Legion time walking, Mage Tower stuff, mostly. Uh, and joining us to do that, we have recently anointed counselor uh bruce step would you like to introduce Hello. yourself i'm bruce step uh you can also call me sage either or i am a long time player wow been playing since early vanilla started raiding i raided in every expansion but started seriously raiding and legion uh until shadowlands came out and i got my first ce at that point and I've been an achievement hunter, at least in current content. Sometimes old content just it's hard without other players there. It's <laughs> boring and lonely. But achievement hunter, transmog hunter. I love love the outdoor stuff until I'm done with it and then I couldn't do it anymore. Once I'm done, I'm not going back. <laughs> nice. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Glad to be here. Yeah, awesome. No, definitely. Thanks for uh thanks for turning up. Uh at least on time. Emerson was not on time. He forgot his <laughs> camera. So his fault. All right. That's mm. <laughs> I was all awesome. ready to go and then like I looked at I went to turn on the video and the button was grayed out because there was no camera attached to my computer. And I went, Oh no. Oh, I had a similar yeah. issue. My my USB hub that my camera was on died. So Oh but I, I had I did it more than five minutes in advance, so I figured that out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, like my, my camera stays on this computer pretty much all the time. Uh, but I moved it to my other computer for a work thing on Friday and never moved it back. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Um, um awesome. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. But, so um uh, so before we get yeah. into Mage Tower stuff, is there any like stuff from this week that we want to go over? Or the past two weeks because we didn't have an episode last week. Yeah, yeah. So sorry about last week. I was, of course, it's always me why we don't have episodes because I have a family that likes to take my time away from doing things like this. Freaking <laughs> ridiculous. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, we had a couple of things. So I think the, the big thing that happened over the past two weeks uh, that most people probably care about is they did do a tuning pass on the Brewmaster and Mistweaver tier sets uh, for 9.2. Um, so I'll go over the Mistweaver one real quick. Um, and then I, I think, which is really not that big a deal. And then. Um, well, we can go through the uh, the Brewmaster one. So the biggest deal that happened is they named the set. It is called the Garb of the Grand Upwelling, which Upwelling is a terrible talent. It's also a terrible name to name a set, but uh, we do have a name for the set now. Um, and also they added in that on the two-piece, um, the residual healing effect of Essence Font has been increased by 5%, along with the additional two seconds of the hot. So essentially the healing, the hot healing is now 5% stronger. Um, Emily, if you can help me out here, what is five percent of zero? I, th still, I think that's still zero. Still zero, yeah. So minor at best type change. Um, we have a little bit more healing on the hot, um, but uh, but yeah. So they're looking at things, which is cool. But this, I mean, the two piece is still super lackluster in terms of power. All the power is still in the four piece, which is still the same. Um, other than the only other thing we learned about the four piece, which wasn't in the patch notes, but. Um, first of all, massive circle. I don't think we know at the time last time we spoke, but it's a 10 yeah. uh, yard radius. So it's you know, huge. It's massive. It's also the graphic for um, I don't know if you remember Grand Magister Elison in Nighthold. Yeah. But it's the graphic for for the puddle she used to put on the ground you had to soak, like the starting graphic. Yeah. Uh, it's ridiculously annoying. Uh, they have to tone it down, at least for at least for the monk in question, because like Use it a couple of times, you can't see ground effects. Like you're just, yeah. you're screwed. But, uh, the, uh, but the cool thing is, it's a massive circle. So we did PTR testing in the monk in, in our group, the Mistweaver in our group. Um, <laughs> just like spent the first half of the first PTR, uh, like the Zymox test, just trying to figure out what that graphic was. <laughs> Like, it okay, also what is this of, effect? Uh, what is this mechanic? Where where is this in the journal? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. it reminded me of Bashara too. Yep. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it gave me PTSD when I saw it for the first time. 
I <laughs> saw it in Corvos, and I figured it was someone's toy that they were like they had done like the they had done you know the normal Torrin shenanigans of like mm. using all the giant potions, and it was just a regular size like mage thing, and they had. <laughs> you know just gotten gotten giant and like oh look at this giant animation but no that's actually just the regular size of it it's huge <laughs> it's yeah huge yeah so i mean good news it is a big circle you can move around i think a lot of people were concerned about using it and then have to move in melee or have to move out of it but it's 10 yard radius you know 20 yards across it's it's massive like you shouldn't ever use it and then move out of it in those 10 seconds um which is cool but yeah the the updates to the tier set, though, the two piece is just like, ah, whatever, like two or five percent more healing on a hot yeah. that does limited healing anyway. So, um, but yeah, so but I think the bigger news might have been the Brewmaster set. So you guys got an actual new set bonus, right? Yes, they completely replaced our four piece. Uh, please stop talking about the two piece bonus. The two piece bonus is fine. Uh, but the four piece bonus was not. It was really bad. It was basically not. It, it basically was like it, it, it's like if they put four piece bonus and there just wasn't any text after it that's that's <laughs> what it was um what it is now kick smash does 50 percent more damage heals you for 100 percent of the damage dealt and gives you or gives you fuck i gotta hold up now um, it's 66 percent of the damage dealt and then and grants you, you 60 66 of the damage dealt. as max hp yeah. um currently there is no cap on the max hp you can get and you can refresh it. So you can get uh, very large health values. That's going to make sure that you see touches. Yeah, you can use it in AoE. Uh, Panini has a screenshot of his health bar being 315k HP. Uh, Back from in the hitting, now. Yeah, from hitting uh, Keg Smash on... Uh, the AOE testing dummies in one of the order halls. So that was fun. So the the oh because the it's of the damage dealt. So if it hits multiple targets, yeah. it deals more damage. Gotcha. Imagine Jesus. that in uh, when you have like the old raid scaling and you can cool. smash for a billion damage. Yeah, yeah. old raid. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. That's cra- That's crazy. But it, um, so, but Keg Smash's cooldown is, is it, well, it's less than 10 seconds anyway, right? Like just yeah, the base it, cooldown? It's the base cooldown is about seven seconds, I think. It's either eight seconds or seven seconds. And then with gotcha. the amount of haste you'll have, it'll be six to seven seconds long. Um, and I don't remember the stacking behavior on hand, offhand. I don't believe, I believe you can just refresh it, but it doesn't stack the HP. Because like in raid testing, I wasn't actually getting a bajillion HP off of it. I was getting a reasonable amount, but we were testing mostly single target stuff. So, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Um, I could not notice the set bonus at all on heroic testing, at, to be honest. The stuff just yeah. didn't do enough damage that the healing was noticeable. The max HP didn't really matter. Um, and I mean, the, to, do, to notice the damage, I would have needed to pull up a log, basically. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, numerically, it's good. In practice, it's kind of boring, but it will have interactions that will make it interesting, I think, because of specifically, like Bruce Sepp referenced, Touch of Death. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you know, imagine setting up on something like Soul Render. You know, you throw a Keg Smash on the ads while they have 100% increased damage taken. Uh, you know, get your ruin nice... all my Windwalker parses with your yeah. touch of death stealing. Get 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 the nice, you know, <laughs> casual 200k HP and then hit touch of death on something. And that yeah. kind of setup and, and payoff is really cool. Um moment to moment rotational gameplay, not so much, but uh having that kind of you know bonus is is okay. I'm 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 happy with this. Awesome. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, I know that last week we talked about the, or two weeks ago we talked about the other four piece, and it was just like, yeah, this is, you already have unlimited shuffle duration. So, like, what is yeah. the point of this? <laughs> yeah. Was the point of giving you more duration for something that's always up? So, no, that's cool. Uh, so, I'm glad, I mean, glad Brews are happy. At least, yeah. Um, no changes to the Woodwalker set, right? No, not that I no. saw. Okay. Just, uh, still, still just buggy. a micromanaging game. Yeah. Yeah. Does the does the brewmaster buff stack with storm stouts? Like when yes. you do two in a row? 
Yes. Awesome. That's going to be um, crazy. So it stacks with the damage increase from Storm Stouts. It also benefits from the damage increase from uh, Kyrian, a Weapons of Order, and okay. from um, the Conduit that increases our Keg Smash damage against targets that have Breath of Fire active on them. So there's actually a bunch of different multipliers that haven't really mattered because we didn't have anything that specifically cared about Keg Smash, but now that we do, it all those start those pieces start fitting together. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it will probably mean that our default legendary... I mean, our default legendary is basically Storm Stout's last keg, pretty much always mm -hmm. right now. Um, Shard Passions is a solid choice for raid, and there's Mighty Poor for high keys. Um, but Shard Passions is currently like 1,000 DPS ahead of Storm Stout's. It's just like... If you play perfectly, it's a thousand DPS, and if you don't, it's probably a DPS loss. Um, this is going to mean that they're going to be like about equal in DPS, and like if they're about equal, just play the easier one. Yeah, and yeah, it's so. interesting. Well, a little bit of a shake. I like that. I see this. Is what I think tier set should do is like do a little bit of a shake up, you know, um, mm -hmm. or at least make something do like something interesting with the ability, even if it's for a tier. So, um. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, I guess the only other thing that happened over the past two weeks that we wanted to touch on, other than sort of the mage tower stuff, right, is there was a little bit of raid testing done. I think what four bosses were tested total yep. uh, on heroic over the past two weeks, um, which I think we were commenting right before we started. But it seems very early for this to occur um, in terms of just like the patch cycle. Typically, raid testing is. I feel like it's more like week three, week you know. It's, Three, four in the patch, right? We actually, this is highly unusual. We got raid testing before the zone was available, like the, the open world zone was available to test. Uh, the yeah. first of the raid testing, you actually could not go to Xerath Mortis. Yeah. So it's it's super early. I don't think we're going to go too much into it, at least on this episode, because we have some other stuff to, <laughs> oh, excuse me, talk about. But um, but I know, Emerson, you were able to do, I think, all four bosses. And I guess yeah. high level, 30,000 foot view of the world. How is uh, How are they looking? In terms of fights i think it looks good so far um zymox seems like actually so my quick impression of zymox is that they took zymox from castle natria and they learned all of the lessons about what went wrong with the push timers on that fight and they took those lessons and they made a it's a different boss it's not just a rehash of zymox from castle natria but mm -hmm. it is something that has percent based push timers that also doesn't seem like it's going to screw you over for pushing too quickly Oh, which is cool. Um, I'm hoping to see, like, I'm okay with them doing the percent based push timers if they don't screw you over for going too fast. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, on the whole, like, we tested, uh, what was it? Zymox, uh, Lahuvim, Dasegne, I don't know how to say that, and Skolex. <laughs> and um, they're, all, they're all pretty good. They're mostly early bosses. Um, there's, Definitely some major bugs, like Skolex, you could get to Burrow outside of his combat area. Um, he would still do mechanics. There's no real point that I can see to it, but I have a feeling you could probably get him to Burrow far enough away that he would just like bug out and stop doing anything at all. Uh, so that was okay. fun. Uh, but other than that, like it, it, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, we, I think we'll be talking more detail about PTR testing, maybe next episode, maybe the one after. It depends on when more testing happens. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, I feel for me it's just always awful because like the timing just sucks. Yeah, so it's just always at the end of my day and like <laughs> my work day, and it's just like trying to get free for that to also do raid testing is just awful. So I generally like always miss it. But yeah, I've been watching a, a little bit of the videos. The Zymox one looks cool. I mean, the traps are still there, and like the port yeah. stuff still looks fun, uh, which I still think is one of the cooler mechanics, right? Like that that was cool. Even like when they did it with Rastakhan. Back in uh, yeah. was that Battle of Zart BOD? Like that was just a cool like portal play. So I'm always a fan of mechanics that like players that interact with the encounter, but players get to influence like where they specifically go. So yeah, plus it's an easier yeah. way to blame people you raid with for being idiots. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> always a good time to to call somebody out on that. So um, yeah. it's always so during cool. the middle of my work day. Can't ever really do it that often. 
Yeah. 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 See, I get, I get why they do it because I guess the developers also have it, but or they're they have to watch it and they also have to work. But yeah, it's always a little, a little. Rough. If it was like two hours earlier, I could actually make it work, which is funny enough. Or like two <laughs> hours later, like at the end of the the yep. West Coast yeah. workday, but that time is just like real bad. So yeah, it's four to six p.m. for me, which is like at the yeah. end of my workday. Basically, I basically stop work an hour early and go do PTR testing. Um, yeah, and. It's actually slightly awkward on Friday because basically when they do testing on Friday, which they did one of these testing days, um, I did two hours of PTR testing, had a two hour break and then four hours of main raid. So <laughs> that was a lot of raiding in one day. Oh yeah. I could, yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot about that for you. Yeah. That is a, that is a yeah, bolt or butt load of raiding there. Boat load of raiding. So, um, well, cool. Hey. Well, I'm oh, sorry. No, I, I, I can't raid with my friends that long. In one single <laughs> day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I I like the bosses. I don't think there's one that stood out to me as really like I didn't I didn't you know I hated this boss. There's no like yeah I don't know. There's not a fate scribe kind of boss that we tested that I'm like this is going to absolutely suck when it goes yeah. live, which is good. Um, yeah. That'd be awesome, yeah. And I hope I hope they actually push through and don't test the last three. I hope they actually can make that happen. Like, oh, man, I whew, that's going to be wild if they do. I cannot wait. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, like if you look at at least their track record this expansion, like Denathrius and Sylvanas didn't have like game breaking bugs. Like they had a couple like oversights in terms of like strat things, but like yeah. To I be fair, those oversights not changes. Uh, did Denethrys get any changes during the world first race? The, not that I think. I think they changed a couple things with the ads in okay. P2. But yeah, like, they, or sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was no, no. What are you gonna say? Um, I don't know exactly added, what they changed. Uh, so, <laughs> I I was watching it intently. I remember they added it in a rage after Echo uh, decided to send only now on the left side and nineteen other right, people on the right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I said to that, but yeah, I forget on I forget on Denathrius if they did anything, but no, you're right. I mean, the last bosses have been really good, so I, I think I'm less concerned about that. It's like the bosses right before them, with yeah. both Stone Legion and KT being the <laughs> the penultimate boss in the last two raids. So yeah, um, but no, it'd be uh, it might be cool if they do that. It'd be cool to see those guys get to that, you know, without any prior knowledge other than Dungeon Journal stuff. So yeah, um. But cool. So I think then uh, I think next. So any any other topics over the last couple of weeks before we jump into the main topic for today? Not really. Not that I'm aware of. Um, okay. Main topic then. Legion time walking started yes. this past week. Um, it was slated to be two weeks long. Uh, and there's two main pieces to this time walking that most people care about. There's the Mage Tower, and there's Time Walking Mythic Plus. Um, the Mage Tower they've already announced is going to be extended to be a month long. I don't know if that also includes the Time Walking Mythic Plus. I'm hopeful because I really Me actually too. kind of missed the Legion keys. They're a lot of fun. Um, even if I, yeah. they do show yeah. their age. <laughs> they do show their age, but there are a lot of there are a lot of cool dungeons that I miss doing there, and I'm I'm, I'm kind of sad that like. Like Black or Cold was picked over, like I don't know. I like Seed of the Triumvirate a lot. Okay, uh, like you that, are no but... longer welcome on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a Windwalker more? thing. <laughs> yeah. Was it just Seed like being able to like roll and dragon Windwalker punch now. stuff? No, th uh, th that was a world of le a legendary switching. Right, you would be able to switch for the last right. boss to do mega damage with the touch of death gloves twice. Oh, yeah. You'd be able to. Double dip the two hundred percent damage bonus with Touch of Death on the first boss. Okay, Just, that's how Windwalker Touch of Death worked in Legion. You would double dip huge damage bonuses like that. You get gotcha. you get a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, not really looking forward to pushing Darkheart Thicket without a Pride as you know yeah. as a Windwalker yep. nowadays. Yep, Xavius is gonna um, be rough, especially without being able to switch to stuff like that. It's that was like a key part of pushing high back in the day was switching to pride as for the last boss when you had no way to soak two back-to-back -back bolts or whatever it was. Right. 
but I do hope that they keep it around for at least two two weeks every cycle, so you get a tyrannical and a fortified infernal every every Legion time walking. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't. I like. I don't want to do tyrannical every time. Yeah, I want to experience it is both. currently. So for, for reference, it is currently tyrannical. Um, and we're yeah. So um, one thing. So I don't think we're gonna spend too much time on Legion Mythic Boss. Maybe we will. I don't know. Um, but all the bosses, despite being tyrannical, have very reasonable health pools. I hadn't really noticed that. Like you do a tyrannical key in, uh, in Shadowlands. And I swear the bosses are like twice as long on Tyrannical yeah. as the bosses are in Legion. And I don't know if that's just a time walking scaling thing or what, but uh, I like the shorter bosses. Me too. I think that's just the way they were designed and it's, they kind of just scaled it up as is. I, uh, I, I hope that they take that going forward and realize that they should apply that to all mythic minions. Yeah. I'm yeah. wondering if it's the same tyrannical though. Like they changed tyrannical for Shadowlands, right? Or whatever. And right. I don't know if it's the same tyrannical or if it's the Legion tyrannical. That's oh, true. That's true. I have a feeling it's the same tyrannical, but I don't know for sure. Um yeah. But it it, it oh. feels like the the tyrannical Legion bosses, like you get to see their you get like through one to two rotations of their mechanics and then they're dead with bloodlust um and that feels like the right length as opposed to like bloodlusting on half the the bosses in channel lands and you get you go through four cycles on like a tyrannical 15 or 16 um and it depends on the dps but i was doing it with uh we shall say trash alts uh in my guild <laughs> uh <laughs> last night and it was fine it was great yeah yeah i mean it's it'll be it'll it's it seems like a nice it seems like something that most people that i've talked to have really really enjoyed or you know i've thought it's been fun when they've done it so yeah hopefully this is sort of the idea of something they'll keep around and i agree yeah the two week keeping legion time walking around for two weeks every cycle i think makes sense just so you can do both sides of the or see both sides of sort of the the mythic plus you know meta at that point or whatever it ends up being right the the two different challenge sides of it so yeah um i'm still in favor think... of them just keeping it like give me an entire season of legion plus shadowlands mythic plus just like the right. great push yeah like and mdi and stuff or whatever like they added i have a shard and all that good stuff to the great push which is going on that's true that's true. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they keep they keep it alive. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some of the stuff. The time walking just as a concept sometimes is always a little bit weird. Like I get why they do it. Like it's different event based stuff, but like some of this stuff, it'd be cool if it was just always around. Like yeah. the mage shower feels like something that I know we're gonna talk about it in a minute, but it feels like something that should just always be there and not based on like some sort of time gated thing because there's nothing inherent. Like you don't gain anything from doing this other than some cosmetics, right? Like there's right. no. There's nothing like holding, I don't know, that you'd want to like min max around getting it. You don't actually don't even get currency for it too. So you couldn't even like if they release yeah. new like time working rewards, you couldn't just bottle or um bank a bunch of currency to like buy that stuff the first day it came out. So yeah. Not that uh, anybody cares about time walking rewards, but the time walking element of myth the Mythic Plus stuff also means that they really do need to like gut every single trinket or item that ends up being super good. Um, yeah. we've already seen some of that Rising Heart of Darkness from Dark Heart Thicket got gutted before release. The Quarter Stars auto attack ring got uh, nerfed substantially. I think it's still good for a couple specs, but it got nerfed a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff like that, that if it were available for a whole season, it would be fine because you could just get it that season. And, you know, the next season when the eye level bump happens, it's probably not worth it anymore. Maybe it's like slightly better than the a, a higher eye level thing, but not by enough that it's a big deal. If they would have brought lower Karazhan back, oh, I would yeah. be, my healers would be making me farm for Drape of Shame all day, every day. Yeah, that yeah. I'm just yeah, exactly. Uh, Karazhan back. That's forgot about that. The Karazhan dungeons were fun. Car yeah, Kar those like the mega dungeons in general. I feel like have always been really fun, but 
I think we're going to live on. That's a little bit of a tangent statement, so we won't go too far yeah. into that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the, uh, the next Legion time walking is slated in the in game calendar for like March 2022. It's so far it just, away. Yeah. That's just too yeah. long for something yeah, that seems months. so popular. So I, I understand. And it's going to hit so every season. Yeah. There's going to be. So there's this concept when you're talking multiplayer games of like queue starvation uh, if you have too many different queues for people to go into then there's not going to be enough, like most queues will not have enough people to actually fire so you 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 know to reference like magic arena has this at times where there's like four or five different queues like for each format and then there's four different formats and all this stuff mm-hmm. so Sometimes some of the queues you just end up waiting for like ten minutes to get a get a game. Um, actually, it's not that bad. They they've got a bajillion players now, so it's not that bad. It was during the beta, but it's not bad right if, now. Um, but the Legion, like the different Mythic Plus stuff, doesn't really compete with each other, right? It's like I would no, be very happy if they just like gave us the legion time walking just as extra like it's it's an extra set of dungeons instead of doing the eight shadowlands dungeons we can have the yeah. eight shadowlands dungeons plus eight legion time walking dungeons and just it's twice as much dungeons the the feeling that i get at least this is the engineer engineer in me coming out but the feeling i get is they didn't want to commit to eight dungeons full time yet yeah i think that i think they were... wanted to see the work involved and and the interest and the the the, per, the persistent interest and yeah any what the actual ROI would be they are and I can definitely understand that in part because well for one thing I don't push keys I'm doing my weeklies kind of thing um, but the Legion time walking keys are definitely tuned differently in a way that would negatively impact like pushing high keys. Because there are still a bunch of like rippy one shots, even if you're just doing a 15. Um, And those are going to get so much worse if you go higher. So, and they've largely removed those kind of one shots until you get to very, very high keys in uh, Shadowlands dungeons. Um, So, don't bring back BFA dungeons. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. I actually That's think they're fine. Like. like, okay, they can skip King's Rest and uh, yep. Shrine of the Storms. <laughs> Those two can stay out. You know, if they're picking some of them, but, you know, Underrot's fun. The first boss sucks, but uh, Underrot's fun. Um, Freehold, of what? course, a blast. What? Underrot's fun. I didn't, I, I didn't like Underrot that much. It, it was kind okay. of a gimmicky there's, route. There's two, there's two problems with Underrot, okay? There's the first boss, and there's the trash after the third boss. Um, where you like tr- are trying to skip all the worms and things. Those worms suck. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't. I would be happy if they brought back like some of the BFA dungeons. You know, they can give us no, like Alazar and Freehold and Underrot, and you know, they can leave off Siege of Burrell. They can give us like three. We can get a, a microcosm of BFA Mythic Plus, and they can leave. As out. long as it what was, what was the one in Dressar the uh, the the. Oh yeah, the witch Wake place. Banner. That one, Wake yeah, Banner no. can come back too. That one was. They fixed all the ploy <laughs> through wall shit by the end of the expansion. But the the view, like the view in that dungeon, was awful. Like the camera work to like make it so you weren't just staring at a wall twenty four seven is just no. Yeah, I, I mean, that okay, place. that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I hate that place. Uh, but... Toldegor can stay gone. That one. Uh, that's, that's yes, good. yes. Agreed. The prison. Ugh. Yeah. What else love, wi- love, wiping, love wiping the mobs getting stuck in the wall as you use the cannons to like kill them. That was always my yes. favorite. It was like the permanent combat and then just getting ported and dying was always fun. Yes. I don't like cannons and that kind of stuff in dungeons. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. It was with like that plague borers and plague fall. Like I'm sitting yeah. on my cooldowns for ten minutes, not doing anything. And you pull yeah. three quarters of the dungeon into the cannons, kill it all with those. And if you screw it up, the key's dead. Exactly. Exactly. But um, but maybe enough about <laughs> terrible BFA dungeons. Uh, <laughs> we just get sidetracked. 
Yeah, we could talk a little bit about maybe some of the Mage Tower stuff. So we'll start there, I think. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, so I guess to give a little bit of background for people who might not realize, um, Mage Tower was a piece of solo content that was released back in Legion. So in this case, it's timing up with Legion time walking. Um, and Blizzard is essentially bringing it back. At the time, it was supposed to be a very difficult, like, solo piece of content that you did. And your reward was essentially just a cosmetic for your artifact weapon at that point. Um, they've essentially brought back that exact those exact encounters um the encounters were sorry they were spec and class specific so i think there was seven total encounters um and and the specs your spec and class or your class and spec basically did one or another uh one of those seven essentially and they also Um, there's only seven but they each has tweaks for different specs most of the time that's true um so for example all the tank specs have the same encounter but it varies in in subtle ways from from or sometimes not so subtle ways from from tank to tank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So um. And then yeah, the reward at that point was a legion. It was an artifact skin. So it was a very special skin for your artifact weapon. Now it's essentially a recolor of the armor set from um. Tomb uh, what? Sargaris. Tomb of Sargaris. Sorry, I couldn't. Which think were of the, themselves the recolors of tier sets from the Burning Crusade. Yes. Or updates yes. of them because they have like the three D bits and much higher poly counts. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah. So it's a, essentially a solo piece of content. It's supposed to be very hard for your spec uh, and class. Um, and the idea is you go through essentially a solo scenario and complete it um, based on what it's asking you to do. Um, it's. Uh, I will tell you back in Legion when I did it, it was one of the best things I'd done in WoW outside of raiding in probably forever. Um, since like since like learning how the game worked or maybe like messing around in classic with my friends right it was just a, it's a fun thing to do on your own um i will tell you it was slightly annoying because back then you had to farm a currency and that currency you needed to use unlock keys to do the the stuff but um no it was fun back then uh and i will tell you well, i have not completed the Mistweaver one i have about four pulls in it um because there was a diablo 3 season um <laughs> and uh <laughs> But uh, it's been fun. It's literally the exact same thing. I think the biggest difference is the classes are your class is slightly different than it was back in Legion, but the encounters all felt the encounter felt the same way, at least the Mystery one. Um yeah. and it's been it's been fun doing it, at least initially. Um and it's been I think a lot of people have had fun doing it, um, even just from what I've seen and talked to. So I think I don't know. Before we get into specifics of encounters, I think a lot of people have like a warped perception of the difficulty of the Mage Tower. Because yeah. they did it with Tomb of Sargeras or Antorus gear. Um, the Mage Tower yeah, you could out gear in Legion during yeah. Nighthold. Um, and doing it with... It was hard. Yeah, doing it with heroic Nighthold gear um, was pretty hard. Like, So I started it, started working on, it on my monk at like eye level 890, which is somewhere between heroic Emerald Nightmare and heroic uh, Nighthold gear levels and i think i finished it when i was at like 903 or 904 um two of sargeras gear for reference was i think heroic was like 915 or 920 something like that um oh i forgot about titan forging so titan forging warps all those numbers i have no idea what any of them mean anymore but <laughs> um yeah. yeah your gear did matter there because you your regular gear just like worked the main shower this time around all your gear gets scaled down to eye level 50. You are scaled down to level 45. You keep all of your higher level abilities and things, but covenants, legendaries, conduits, uh, Azerite stuff from BFA, Legion artifacts, Legion legendaries, none of that stuff works. Um, and they have been systematically squashing a bunch of time walking stuff that scales weirdly, which uh, I know some people are not happy about because it wrecks the like builds people would use for just regular old time walking dungeons to just like go mm-hmm. into a time walking dungeon and be an actual god yeah. um but yeah that i think that's been the interesting part i'd say like the the hot fixes right so yeah i think you're right emelson i think a lot of people forget that back then like it was not a four pull thing and you did it like i remember on my monk when i did it in probably mythic level nighthold gear it took me probably like 40 or 50 attempts yeah. Right, like it was not a, it was not a like walk in there, work on it for an hour, get it done. And P- I, like I saw somebody today was like, oh, oh man, finally over. I did it in five hours. It was so hard. I'm like, 
spent twice that when it originally came out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I probably spent 200 pulls doing an on Brewmaster the first time. Um, yeah, which well, I'll, well the Brewmaster I'll, one was notoriously harder, I think. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'll talk more um, about the Brewmaster one now uh, in a bit. Yeah. But yeah, it it they were hard. They were yeah. hard. They were a lot of fun. Um, I actually do think that in my case specifically, the currency did some good because it meant I couldn't just blast the mage tower over and over again for three days straight. Um, oh yeah. So it forced me to take breaks. <laughs> I, d I definitely lost a couple of like the keys just from being like dying to something stupid, going right back in there, and then dying in phase one to something even stupider. Just be like, okay, I need yeah. to take a step back. Like, I'm guilty. I'm getting a little tilted here now. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I mean, it's the, been. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, sorry, Sage. Um, go, go, go. <laughs> I did the Windwalker one the day it came out in Legion, and that took me a good three, three and a half hours without any guides. But yeah. The, the Mistweaver and the cool. Brewmaster ones I did at the end of Antorus, and it was yeah. way easier when you outgeared it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Both of them have damage checks, or throughput checks, I guess I should say, because Mistweaver. Yeah. But both of them have throughput checks, and they did get significantly easier. Um, but oh, the Brewmaster one in particular still has, like, it's got all the knockback stuff <laughs> that you can't outgear. No amount of gear is going to keep you from getting knocked off the platform by an Infernal. Um, yeah so yeah no but yeah so i mean that's been i think that's been the the one thing that's all that's been funny to me and, and i mean blizzard made a post on this about they're looking at the scaling and they've made a couple of scaling adjustments um i made a couple of changes to the way the encounters work even now um yeah. but um but no largely i mean i think that's the one thing people just think just generally, like the general community might not remember just how difficult it was um to do the stuff back you know in legion when it came out so um but no it's been it's it's i think the it's been very positive and i think so positive that you mentioned it wasn't blizzard is extending uh at least mage tower. is it all of legion time walker or is it just the mage tower by an additional two uh, weeks they just said mage tower but i'm not sure how that works if it's tied to the time walking event gotcha um, so i i don't know i'm hoping it includes the rest of the time walking stuff but maybe it doesn't um, yeah. At the least, it's going to be the main shower. And part of the reason they're doing it is because of the changes that they've had to make. Uh, I guess yeah. had to use a strong word. But um, so one of the things that's different this time around, obviously, we lost all the borrowed power from Legion, but they tuned it in a way that it makes sense. Like, since they are, our gear is scaled and everything, um, they have a very narrow band of like player power to tune things mm -hmm. around. Um, and there are items and there are enchants like the Crusader enchant that kind of cheese that, but by and large, they have a narrow band that they can tune around. Um, right. So the encounters are pretty tightly tuned. What is different is actually just the base classes. Uh, and some of them are more different than others. Yeah. Um, so things like Protection Paladin had the HP of their encounter nerfed. Uh, in part just because the class does less damage than it did in Legion relative to, you know, the other tank specs. Because back in Legion, theirs, theirs had like 50% more health than the Brewmaster one. Um, and they do not do 50% more damage as a baseline class right now. They, they do more, but not 50% more. So it was already like reduced some and they reduced it further. Um, but like, yeah... It, it, some of it, I think, is is deserved nerfs to bring them kind of in line with other challenges. But also, <laughs> there's a lot of complaining. And like the Protection Paladin one, the, the Bear one, stuff like that are all perfectly doable as they were before the nerfs. They just would have taken longer. And I think that's really where the time-gatedness of time-walking causes problems because right. people can't just be like oh i'm eventually going to get it they have to get it within this two weeks or they wait six months and then they get it or four months and then they get another week to spend on it yeah yeah and i think i mean that's i think that's the other problem too is that i think a lot of the a lot of the fact that this is sort of a a timed event right now at least it'll come back but it's timed right now right it's just sort of forcing blizzard's hand and making sure that like people can get this done yeah in the week they want to do it it's just like 
similar. I don't know. I'd rather them. Guest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. So I'm thinking as I, as I'm talking, I, like it reminds me of Torghast, which is not the thing you want. But I'll, I'll say the the changes that I've seen. So I've only really paid attention. To be fair, the Misweaver sort of um, uh, scenario or event or what we're calling this Mage Tower Challenge. Sorry. Um, and the changes they made are are sort of okay, I'd say. They basically made some of the mobs in the first part of the instance um, less one-shotty, we'll say, right. um, and gave you a little bit more DPS time, which I think is appropriate. I think healer DPS back then was a little bit higher than it is right now, just relatively speaking. Um, but the interesting part, too, about the Mistweaver specific one is that uh, the last boss is a lot more health for Mistweavers than any other healer spec, which is interesting. <laughs> Um, so it makes the last boss, yeah, last boss a little bit. It's definitely a DPS check, more of a DPS check than any other class, right? Huh. Um, yeah, the other thing too weave, is a lot like move in and weave attacks between lowering your health and yeah, positioning his jumps, and it, it seems like you have to do that a lot more in a misweaver than the rest. Yeah, you and you have you want to you want to stack. So the way the last boss works, say, if you haven't done it, is like he'll. He'll put a debuff on you, like the Nightbane debuff, where when it expires, it does damage based on the amount of missing or amount of total health you have. So you want less health in general, so it does less overall damage. That's one piece. And then they, he also puts fire patch on the ground. So he'll leave and put a fire patch on the ground. So it's essentially that, and it doesn't go away. So that sort of shortens the amount of room you have to, to finish the encounter. So it's a little bit, that's how they do the DPS check. But with the health, like there's this weird thing with Mystery where you almost want to stack those puddles. And generally speaking, if you stack puddles, you're dying. So like you have to like use your defensive in a way right before he jumps to stack a puddle on top of another puddle. And that way you get more room and it hence and, and turn more time to DPS. So yeah, it's uh, it's super tight, but like speaking with a couple other people who've done the other healer ones, like the, the Druid, like if you're a resto Druid, it's almost not free, but it's like considerably easier. Um, just in terms of the damage they do and the fact that they're ranged and all their damage is ranged. That sort of helps out a lot of the other stuff, but, um, but no, it's, um, I think, yeah, in general, the changes I've seen them make, at least to this healer one, seem okay um, in terms of just, like, making it slightly easier, at least slightly less annoying to, like, if you mess up even for one second, you um, you don't wipe, at least with this one, right? In other, in other instances, you might be just done um, by, like, missing a kick or missing an interrupt on a mage. Now you have a little bit more time um yeah get through it so think, so the arcane blitz changed to the first phase of that one so there's casters they cast arcane blitz you really don't want them to get those casts off more than once or twice because they get a stacking buff and it'll start just one-shotting people apparently with how they changed that they can the mages can sometimes just like naturally lose their stacks because they spend some time not casting it which uh may be a little bit more of a nerf than intended but yeah i don't think the first yeah. one, the first part is really like it's one of the harder pieces of it, but I don't think that in particular was one of the harder pieces of that part. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it, to be fair, that is really, there's only one wave where that's really an issue, and it's a, it's a mage plus two other mobs. And the idea is before those other mobs do some fixate ability, you want to have the mage almost dead or dead because you'll have to run away from the mage and as a misweaver, you can't DPS during that time. Right. So like this helps in terms of number one, you get a little bit more time and can stun a little bit later. But number two, as you do that runaway portion, like the mage won't stack up really high and essentially get in like one shot range in terms of its damage then. So yeah, yeah, a little bit easier there. I will say I'm glad that they're, I I'm glad they're nerfing the weird scaling stuff because it's just a super unintuitive way to outgear the, the content. Yeah, and it I mean, it trivializes things like... it in weird ways and, I want, it, I want the challenge to be preserved. Yeah. yeah. There are things like Umbrella Fury Potion is about as good as uh, the current uh, Phantom Fire Potion, except it lasts twice as long, so it's twice as good. Um, you get, you know, double the value for your potions. Um, and those were selling, they went from like being worthless to being, you know, 3,000 gold a piece on, on wow. my realm and it's crazy just things like that like the crusader enchant is again like a kind of infamous one where this the healing that you get from it is really really high because of the weird scaling stuff um but in the process of nerfing this they're of course nerfing it for every time walking thing so there's apparently like a community of people that like put together these really like crazy builds where they're using a bunch of random 
you know, burning crusade gear with triple sockets and meta gems and, and low level enchants and bringing that into time walking and actually just like being able to effectively solo it, like right. solo regular five person dungeons in time walking, um, which I understand having your toys taken away is kind of frustrating, but also I kind of agree with you, Grustep, about wanting, like, I don't, I would, I guess I don't personally care if somebody gets it by cheesing it with a bunch of time walking gear, but I don't want that to be the way that most people feel compelled to approach it because yeah. of the time gated nature of, of the event. Like, if you need to make sure that it, like, if you have the Saturday to spend an afternoon on it every four months, um, then it just makes sense to spend the four months in between time walking events putting together one of these sets and trivializing the encounter. Um, I do think ultimately that is something that they have to address. And I think that they might be addressing it the wrong way. I feel like most people wouldn't because like these sets are not easy to put together. Um, so they take some research, they take some effort. There yeah. are, you know, you, you sometimes have to go do old raids and hope they drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, it's frustrating with the time gated nature of it. And then you have a long downtime period where you have plenty of time to farm all this stuff up. And next time it yeah. comes around, it'll be a completely different experience because you're 40 to 50% stronger. Yeah. I, I do feel like it is just like the wrong way to solve the problem. I don't think a lot of people are going to go through the effort to put together one of those sets unless they absolutely have to. Um, and if it, it wasn't a time gated thing where they felt like, you know, you know, in order to have a chance of getting this in my one afternoon that I've got, you know, I have to put together this set. Like if, yeah. if it were just more available, which is has multiple goods are multiple multiple good effects because like these are actually just like fun things to do right <laughs> yeah Kinda yeah i think I, that it, sorry no i was I, go ahead. yeah no you can go you can go <laughs> you're good uh i i'm just it, it's frustrating because it also doesn't really apply to regular time walking either like regular time walking you get all your toys back presumably and those are way better at scaling down to regular time walking dungeons than anything you set up for the mage tower it's like a mage tower time walking set is its own thing and it it's extremely annoying to farm and not have any use for it at all and you don't really need to keep the toys anymore after that like you you yeah. might keep an old tier set before they made them legacy to use them in time walking or an old legendary yeah. and all that stuff but none of that and none of that in mage tower you you make yeah. this set you kill it you're done the set can be destroyed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but I feel like if it were just always available, if the Mage Tower were just permanently available, um, then people wouldn't be putting together, like, there would be people putting together sets for it. It is repeatable, so we probably would see people, like, doing silly things just to push the limits of what they could do in the Mage Tower. But people that just wanted the skins, the, the transmog from it, wouldn't be put like putting all of this into the sets yeah yeah and i think i think to be fair the 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 nice part about that being out there or the, this stuff being out there is that it while it is convoluted in terms of a way to make the encounters easier it is a way to make them easier right so like the idea is just in the way that most people play game like if this was back I'll say when WoW first opened and this is they had something like this and the way to beat it was you could cheese it a little bit like that information probably a little bit more difficult to find. But like WoW had had a post up two weeks ago about things you should start farming for the Mage Tower if you wanted yeah. to cheese it, which is just like the, the information isn't hidden to the way that I think most people play video games nowadays, which is like yeah. the minute you generally hit something, you yeah, you can't figure it out, like you Google it and there's probably someone who has written something that you could follow. Right. And I think that I think for me, that's sort of the one thing that I don't like, I don't understand the nerfing of some of the stuff that Blizzard's done because it while it does increase the difficulty, we'll say, of the Mage Tower, which is what the goal of these things is, right? It also, though, ruins 
like we've talked about, which is like the the knock on effect is like the the time walking general community sort of is now like scrambling to figure out other ways to do what they did last week, right? Because yeah. they nerfed a bunch of stuff this week for something else, right? It's the same idea that when you get like updates to PVE or PVP ability or get updates based on something that's happening in PVP that then affects right. PVE like in ways that they didn't realize. It's just it just sort of sucks. And yeah, I think I think you're right. I'm also like if this was sort of an always there um always their thing they might put a little bit more thought or even start to put in tech that says like cool we really don't want crusader to be the enchant that makes this trivial we'll disable a crusader we'll make crusader weaker just in mage tower right which probably takes a little bit longer to do but it's something they could do versus like we have to get this patch out today to just nerf crusader across the board because we know yeah. we can do that without anything additional so i also just think yeah. i don't think people would spend twenty thousand gold on a crusader in hand um or whatever if the mage no. tower was just always up and they could just keep banging their heads on it until they get it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because uh, time is money, friend, and 20,000 gold is a, it's a decent chunk of time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anything, I know we're sort of, I guess we're halfway through. Anything else on, on the mage tower stuff at this point? I wanted to like talk through, I was thinking we could talk through each of the monk mage towers and maybe give other okay. ones that we had like if you've done other other classes and specs mage tower challenges um i think bruce steps you said you had done the windwalker one i've done the brewmaster yeah. one you've worked on the mistweaver one and um but haven't done it yet not for, not not successfully i'm a slacker yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like the mistweaver one is now the hardest of the three monk ones um probably Prob- Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can talk through it. So, I mean, I've done, like, I've gotten to the gotten to like, the final boss, right? But, what's different but, about it from Legion? Or, like, from a strategy level, what's different from how you approached it in Legion? There's, to be fair, not much. Um, like, the, the actual way that you go through it, like, most of your abilities are there from Legion that you have today. I think the nice part is we have a little bit more CC. So, um, what is it? The 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 leg sweep is now baseline versus a talent like it was back I then. Forgotten that that was so yeah. In Legion, yeah, yeah. So like, so now you have you have paralysis, uh, leg sweep, and ring of peace or song of Chi whichever one you want to pick in terms of CC options available. So that's still there. Um, they left all these the um the rest periods the same. So after you do the first phase with the waves, you can rest for however long you want. Like cooldowns come back up. And then move forward. Um, so that's been that's been good. Um, I will say though that the difficulty somewhat comes from uh, in the middle phases. So like the middle phases have a bunch of eyes that come at you, and the eyes explode when they die. Um, and they also do damage around them if you're in melee. So you basically have to like jump in, hit them real quick, run away, have one explode, heal yourself up, have the next explode. Right. Um, and in that regard, your uh, crackling jade lightning does a lot less damage. I'll say, just relatively speaking, I like you used to be able to like hit that a little bit, kill one quickly, then go in and DPS the others. Yeah. Um, so that's been one slight, I'd say, change there. Um, and then in the in the final phase, in the healing phase, just the nature of the way that vivify works is now you have to get renewing mist on targets. So like, there's a phase where you have to not only heal your party but also heal ghosts that try and walk slowly to the middle of the arena right and used to just be able to like focus one with vivify if you focus the far one with vivify that would actually heal the other two ghosts just based on proximity so yeah. the old vivify would just heal your main target plus two random targets and so you used to be able to target the far one it would heal the two ghosts that are closer and not touch your party they have to make sure rem gets out make sure you get vivify on everything um and so that that section is not difficult it's maybe slightly more difficult I think Mistweaver just is generally more healing right now, which is helpful than it did back then. So that phase isn't as hard, but a, a slight change there. And then the final phase, I think like we talked about briefly, the mob just has a lot of health. So like you still have the same issue of like balancing your health with like the debuff going off. Um, and that's still annoying and, and for Mistweaver slightly difficult. Um, there's a few things there. Like you, of course, can dip in the fire. You can also taunt the boss um, to take a couple melee hits from it. Um, just to sort of get yourself down because there is a weird overlap. I haven't hit this yet, but somebody else did where the boss put up the debuff and the debuff is about to expire without a fire pit or fire patch being down so early on, which just puts you well behind for the start, which is uh, which is an interesting timing thing. Um, I I think Volk might have hit that or somebody hit that. 
Um, there was definitely but, some weird timing stuff in some of these challenges. Yeah, where it's just like, yeah, it just doesn't line up the way it should. But but no, I mean, I'd say the challenge is largely the same. I'd say it's just, yeah, that that sort of eye phase used to be pretty simple. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult now that you have to pay attention a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, without having, um, yeah, with the damage, just the, the amount of health the final boss has, it's just, I've gotten there once and it, yeah, I ran out of space and it just was not, not fun. <laughs> Yeah. I'll say yeah. to like think you're doing well and then run out of space, but um, but no, I, I largely the same, no real major strat differences. I mean, other than having more CC, I think it just makes that that opening phase a lot simpler. And that more CC, there are a couple of other areas where you'll use CC. You can sort of extend that, um, and it's helpful at those points too. Just having you know two or three options. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard of Mist one. Weavers. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I've heard of Mist Weavers leaving the. Uh, one ghost in the last thing to reach the boss so that they have time to drink because of a uh, a weird timing bug where he like immediately engages combat after you hear yeah. the last ghost yeah that was that was a you have no time to drink yeah that was that was a strat too in in legion yeah so like yeah because those last ghosts become mobs you have to kill and so te technically you only you have to only heal there's three waves you only have to heal eight ghosts before the next wave triggers you can have so you've let one yeah, if you let one go through, yeah, then there'll be an animation for when that ghost turns into a mob you have to kill, and it's during that animation time where you don't go into combat. But if you don't have any ghosts, then the boss immediately comes out without that sort of interim animation running. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, there is there is a way, there is a thing to do if you want mana. I'll tell you, yeah, I mean, I guess you could use it. There's not, there's just not a lot of healing. The the funny thing is in the last phase, there's not a lot of healing you need to do, but there's a lot of like healing yourself at the right time you need to do because you need to basically balance your health and like yeah in that regard it's like not too bad in terms of like the amount of mana but um or like not needing a ton of mana going into that phase but yeah that is a that is a a quick way to do it and of course you have the downtime between phases one like after you do the first phase with all the waves you can sit there forever and wait for stuff to come out and there's also another pause point right before you go and help your allies towards like the second half where you can pause and definitely wait for cooldown. So yeah. um, the healer one's weird with that. But yeah, it's definitely, I'd say of all the healers, like, so other than Holy Priest, which I think Holy Priest suffers from just having no damage um, <laughs> or not the ability to both heal and do damage. So like they get just, caught yeah. in this area of like, yeah, like yeah. balancing. Um, I think Miss Weaver ends up being probably one of the more difficult healers to do this on. Um, just based on, I mean, Paladin's almost free and Druid's pretty easy. And I, I only assume Shaman is just as easy with the amount of damage they can do. Because um, the, the funny thing is, the more damage you do as a healer in this, the actual better it is, because you just shorten everything. Yeah. Um, so weirdly enough, this I mean, even this was the same in Legion. This was never about how much healing you could do as a healer. It was literally always about how much damage you could put out. So yeah. yeah. How much damage you could put out while keeping everybody alive. Yeah, exa exactly. And can you get through like the really dangerous parts quickly? And that way, you don't need you know healing cooldowns for anything like that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah it was... Uh, it was i mean it's been fun so far it's literally mostly the same um the same as it's been so yeah back then yeah um the brewmaster one i think brewmaster went from probably the hardest challenge to the i don't know the easiest maybe this i think actually probably the second easiest because vengeance can still just ignore the knockbacks by pressing spacebar <laughs> um so that i think makes it easier than brewmasters um but Brewmaster gained a lot. Like the problem in Legion for Brewmaster was the lack of self sustain. Velen's healing sucks. He's a bad priest. And uh, that meant that you had to heal yourself, except the Brewmaster didn't have anything with which to do that. There was like the Guy Plins legendary that turned purified stagger damage into healing done to you, except that we didn't take enough stagger damage to really get huge amounts of healing from it. There's Expel Harm, but you couldn't actually cast Expel Harm without orbs, and it didn't have a base heal. So it was just based on like how much damage you took, whether you could heal or not. So you ended up casting Vivify a decent amount in Phase 1, um, and it just kind of sucked. Uh, this time around, we have Expel Harm, we have Celestial Brew. Uh, I feel like Varus actually does less damage that, um, than they like relative to your hp than they did in legion but i can't that 
um, because I don't have logs from Legion to compare against. Um, but it just, oh, and then of course we have leg sweep baseline. So we have leg sweep plus ROP, um, or in this case, leg sweep plus black ox statue. Uh, black ox statue, very good because it picks up the nether adds for you. Um, we have uh, touch of death now, which is totally new. We didn't have any equivalent of in in legions. And we also have uh, invoke Niazao baseline, which we didn't have, or it was a talent in Legion, so you had to choose between the damage from Rushing Jade Wind and the damage from Invoke Niazao, with Invoke Niazao having some like niche side effects that you could convince Cruel to cast Annihilate on Invoke Niazao instead of on you, and uh, get an extra cast off like that. Um, and you, you can purify a ton of Annihilate damage into Invoke damage. Into Invoke now. damage, yeah. Uh, which is honestly totally unnecessary because um, oh, legitimately, like, so you go in, you're going to have about 7 to 8k health. Mm -hmm. um, Cruel has 40k health or something like that. Uh, maybe it's 60k. 40 to 60k, somewhere in that range. I don't remember the exact number. When you start engaging him. Which just means that basically 20% of the damage you need to do in that phase comes from Touch of Death. And yeah, that makes sense. It's so huge. Um, like you don't even don't e uh, so piece of advice for anybody working on this as a brewmaster. Do not save Fort Brew to try and do an extra big touch of death. It is not worthwhile. Use Fort Brew to eat and annihilate and not die to it. But then you can also like what I did, I ran Cyclotronic Blast, which is the one piece of old gear that I used because I just had it in my bags. It's very good. If you have the Mechagon rep, you should go grab it. Um but if you don't, you won't have time to get it before time walking is up. It's not like making it trivial either. It's just a very good trinket um, compared to a lot of the Shadowlands ones in time walking. Um, but what I did is at the end of it, I used one of Velen's orbs to blind him for four seconds. The blind does not break on damage. So you blind him for four seconds, you do some damage, and then you leg sweep him hit Cyclo, and when the Cyclo finished, I hit Touch of Death. And just did probably 10, 15k damage in that, like, 9 second window and finished him off. It's it's definitely definitely significantly easier. It took me, like, 30 to 40 minutes to do. Um, but it's still... I do actually still think it is one of the harder challenges uh, just because of the knockback stuff. You, there's no yeah. amount of, like, gear and abilities that will fix the fact that you're just going to get yeeted off the platform a bunch of times. Yeah, you only have the transcendence back up there and easily yep. outranged if you're not quick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that that was always the thing that when I did I did all the monk ones back in Legion, but I did everything but Mistweaver like much later. Like once I essentially yeah. you could walk in and, and maybe wipe two or three times even if you were bad. Um, yeah. And the the brewmaster one still took me probably like seven or eight wipes just because and every one of my wipes before I killed it were literally to me forgetting about orbs or like not remembering positioning and just dying yeah. to like getting thrown off right yeah um, yeah. so yeah yeah it's still it's yeah. still a tough mechanic to to get through yeah you gotta you it is still one hundred percent about control more so than damage um, damage is very useful for it getting. So the amount of time you spend in phase one determines the number of infernals that are active in phase two, and fewer infernals is better. So doing more damage in phase one is good, um, but like it's doable with three infernals. I think I had two when I killed it. I know I've seen videos of people doing it with three. Um, mm -hmm. You just like sidestep and move out, and it's fine. Um, you do have to. One piece of advice: you have to be careful when you look at the details or recount or whatever damage breakdown for this because the infernals take triple damage or quadruple damage something some crazy amount of extra damage so if you have something like lightless force lightless force might look like it's doing like your number one damage or something like that because it hits all three infernals a couple times and just does a bajillion damage to the infernals you got to look at damage done to varus and damage done to cruel because those have regular damage taken so there's a bunch of people that have come in and asked like look at this random proctal I have that does so much damage in time walking. And we're like, well, what what damage did it, like, what did it do the damage to? And then they look at it, it's like, oh, it did the damage to an infernal. Yeah, it's like, that's why. That's why. 
I remember in Legion, um, when I did the Brewmaster on at the end of Antorus, you would just you did so much extra damage that you would literally just in one invoke Nuzao or whatever, you would you would go in, he would taunt and tank uh the Inquisitor or whoever the first guy it was in P one and you could just stand there with nine stacks and damage him for the whole invoke and, and he'd be dead by the end of the invoke. The first yeah. invoke that you did. Yeah. It was much more trivial at the end of Antorus in that regard. Yeah. But, but uh yeah, I I do think it is the easiest of the tank challenges for for vengeance for the the glide reason, but that's about it. Um uh, yeah. So then yeah. uh, I, how was the how was the Windwalker one? Yeah. The Windwalker one, I found it to be pretty easy. It only took me one try. I practiced on the PTR, granted, but and had like five to ten tries on there. But it, it's largely the same. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference. There are some that bugs that I reported, like the... Uh, I guess I'll explain it first. So you, there's a, a Tauren named Tugar and a worm called Jormunga, uh, Jormungar or something. Jormog the Jormog. Behemoth. Yeah. Jormog the Behemoth. And um, the worm does sonic screams, and you can interrupt that with stuns and paralysis and stuff. Uh, the worm will go underground and be untargetable and then start charging you. Tugar will put down little crosses on the ground that you have to avoid. He'll put an unavoidable magic dot that you could diffuse off on you. So there's a slight self-healing check uh, with all the damage there. Um, there's a fell burst that he casts like every 13 to 15 seconds that you have to interrupt on cooldown every cool like every time your interrupts up. Um, he will spawn these stalactites that you want to bait the worm into charging you uh, into those stalactites to remove the worm's armor that reduces his damage taken. There's uh, the Fell Surge totem Tugar will occasionally put down, which will stun you for five seconds if it goes off. And uh, the when he, when he summons those stalactites, he'll also summon eggs that st spawn worms, and you want to kill those ASAP. Um, I found that there were there were bugs like the in Legion the the that fell surge totem couldn't be killed by AOE so you had to make like a crackling jade lightning target macro yeah. and just like totem stomp it that way but in in the current iteration it, it's and I reported this on the PTR it just dies to passive cleave so it's almost <laughs> thoughtless um, you just go near it and spinning crane kick or aim your fist of fury at it or whatever it's you don't have to even crackling jade lightning i had to do it a couple of times because it was out of range but yeah. um the other major change that required you to strategize a little differently is in legion when when Tugar or jormog died the other one got uh 150 percent in rage damage dealt but in the mage tower it's not a static 150 it's a stacking over time in rage and that's the main difference. So it more or less kind of enforces you to cleave them together, which you can't do right at the start because the worm has nine stacks of his armor and only takes 10% damage until you remove all nine stacks. But that, that was really the only difference. Is in, in Legion, you could kill one and focus it and not even worry about the worm and just interrupt the sonic scream that the worm did every time and eat one because the enrage is static but if you kill them if you kill them too far apart in hp now you're gonna be trying to kill the, usually you're gonna kill the, the torrent first but you're gonna if you end up with the worm at like 70 percent health you're gonna have to chew through a bunch of sonic screens that just get more and more powerful until it one shots you so yeah. that was the main difference there you just had to ensure that you cleaved the worm down with the with Tugar much more closely, but yeah, that that was it. It there's no DPS check other than ensuring that they die together in the Windwalker one. So it's, fun fact, there's a slight self heal check. Fun fact, go ahead. Sorry. Um, if you let the counter continue to go on, so initially with the stalactite spawn, he'll spawn three or two eggs that turn mm -hmm. into worms. Um, then he'll go to three, then four. It keeps going. Oh, okay. I got those up to eggs, six on my hunter at one point. 
Ah, uh, those eggs and, were uh, nothing for a Windwalker. They died to just spinning crane kick without any thought. Yeah. So I I started on my hunter trying to like single target them down, and that was just massively inefficient, which is why I ended up with six. Um, and I switched to cleaving them like you're talking about now, and they just die. Yeah. For Windwalker, actually, if you're running low on healing for some reason, you can let them turn into worms, and then killing the worms drops your healing orbs that you oh, get for killing a okay. mob. So the the eggs won't when you kill them, but if you need healing, you can let them turn into worms and kill them and walk through those orbs and basically full heal yourself. But oh, wow. I never needed that issue. I never needed that. I was able to self-heal just by chi waving on cooldown, and that was enough self-healing to keep me through the whole thing. But other than the eggs, which aren't really a problem from Windwalker, there's no real DPS check. It's just mechanics 24-7 all the time until you kill it, and that's yeah. it. And if you could do that, there's no reason to cheese it with gear. There's no, like, as you said on Brewmaster, the faster you kill P1, the less Infernals you gotta deal with. There's nothing like that. You just... yeah, It's the same fight the entire 100 to 0. Same fight, just kill it and do the mechanics yeah. yeah so i did it on my hunter so it's the bm hunter challenges um one thing that struck me there is that so you mentioned the thing where you want to like cleave them down now the other thing i noticed is that the fight is actually significantly longer now than i remember it being in legion and that meant that so in legion when i did it on my hunter i actually accidentally failed to remove all nine stacks I had like mm. one or two left on the worm because I just didn't get it through stalactites enough times. So it was taking like 20% reduced damage. And I just, it was fine. I killed it. But with how long the encounter was for my hunter, I haven't tried it on Windwalker yet. So I don't know if this is the same. It was basically impossible for me to not have it remove all nine stacks. Yeah. Um, so like I, I had all nine stacks gone probably halfway through the fight. Yeah, I was, I was done with stack like the third charge like the third stalactites and i had like four more after that yeah it was it was a lot longer and for a fight like that length is the difficulty because you're yeah. you're you're you gotta do it. executing 100 uh percent -huh. all the time yeah i think my kill on my hunter ended up being over 10 minutes long so i bloodlusted twice um, oh man it was it was very slow but yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, I mean, it sounds like of the three, like Windwalker almost ends up being one of the the easier, at least the the three monk ones, right? Within Brewmaster and, and Mistweaver sort of. I think the Windwalker one, if it's not the easiest, like I think Brewmaster is maybe up there in contention for easiest now uh, among yeah. the different monk ones. It's probably, I would say, far less frustrating than the brewmaster one because there's no random rippy like oops you got knocked off the platform and it was too fast right. for you to transcend so you're dead now <laughs> <laughs> the closest thing is like getting hit by a stalactite on the worm one like you get hit by a yeah. stalactite and it does 90 percent of your health and uh, yeah. if there's any other incidental damage or you weren't full health you just die but that's a yeah. bit easier to dodge if you miss the fell surge totem, you get stunned. That could easily land into fell burst coming up, and you miss your interrupt because you're stunned. Yeah, uh, that happened yeah. once on PTR because of lag. <laughs> lag. Nice. Awesome. Um, cool. Anything else on May shower? Um, um. So I, I'll throw this out there. I've done a uh, one of the other challenges as well. The the Sigrin, aka God Queen encounter uh it's not a monk one i did it on retribution paladin and uh that one also feels like it's so it's half the length of uh half the length of the warm one at least it was for me it was about five and a half minutes long as opposed to ten and a half minutes but it's the same kind of like pure mechanics going the whole time but they did add a heart and rage to it, which wasn't there before. So it's six and a half minutes. They heart and rage, and if you're if you haven't killed them, you die. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Which means you do actually have to put a lot of effort into making sure you can like efficiently AOE cleave them, 
so the guides from like legion era are completely off base because they all recommend that you just like cc one and focus one down it was like a very dramatic change to the strategy because of that one switch and the relative tuning level mm -hmm. um, and i think that i think that's come up on a couple of the other challenges too but i haven't done done more than those three right now not last bad. comment I had on the Mage Tower is the Monk Transmog is terrible. It's Tony the Tiger. <laughs> that's Tony all I see. Tony the Tiger? No, I, uh, it's just a weird recolor. And not, I, don't, yeah. I don't like being Tony the Tiger. I, I wear it because I earned it and I want to show it off, but it's not fun yeah. to be Tony Very the Tiger, orange. in my opinion. I, I do actually like it. Um, it doesn't work well on Pandas, I will say. The set <laughs> itself... The, the model of the set does not look good on pandas. It doesn't look good in any of the colors on pandas. It, there's no way it ever could. Um, but I do actually like the color, and so it's it's fine. Um, I'm never going to wear it because it looks bad. I mean, I wore it in Raid this week because, uh, you know, it was new. But, yeah. But then on the other hand, like, the Paladin set, I think, looks really good. So right now my Paladin has the artif the Challenge Artifact skin from legion plus the mage tower um tier set recolor from this mage tower on and that's just kind of neat awesome well you could be like uh these two individuals like marez or el pinor 43 who completed all 36 and they have yeah, all of their transmogs and mounts i do that's crazy so much work yeah all that prep. We do have we have Coffee Co in chat. I don't know if they're still in chat. Hi, Coffee Co. They were complaining about being 80 pulls into the Guardian Druid Mage Tower. Definitely harder than the Brewmaster one. That's another one of the cruel encounters. Um, I have no idea anything about that encounter, honestly, because my bear is level 51 and I haven't touched it. <laughs> I may oh, apparently that. you can go into the mage tower on low level characters. Um oh, yeah, it's yeah. open level 50 or above. Okay. So yeah. I might go in on my bear and just try and pick the uh, recolored um, wear bear skin, but I have the one from Legion, so yeah. I'm not like too particular about that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, because um, uh, guilty of mine. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, so I think the, the tiger is guilty of an arms. Who? Oh, yeah, Tonius. <laughs> Oh, Emerson. Um, so the final topic, we only have about 10 more minutes to get through it. So we don't have a ton of time, but we did want to sort of, since we asked, you know, Brew to, Brew to be here, um, to talk a little bit about the community council and sort of, I guess, really your initial thoughts on it. Um, I, I know that, so Blizzard, of course, community council was something they announced, gosh, probably about a couple months or maybe a month or so ago. Uh, they were setting up essentially a, a public forum where different members of the community could come in and basically post things about the game their thoughts in a very public and sort of high, we'll say highly moderated section of the forums. Um, this would also be a section where we'd get a lot of like developer and player type interaction in terms of those community council members and developers sort of having conversations somewhat out in the open, somewhat maybe a little bit behind closed doors, but um, just a general forum that's a little bit more, we'll say focused from a developer perspective, but also public from a player perspective, at least to read. Um, so Brew looks like sounds like you applied or did the little uh, yeah. application process, got picked, and now you're one of the people shaping the future of all things high level WoW. And now, um, but yeah, no, I think I guess first of all, I guess your initial thoughts on sort of number one, like the onboarding. I, I'd like to learn a little bit more. I mean, the, the the forms are out there, but I guess in terms of maybe what you can and can't talk about, I don't know what they actually had you sign or whatever but in terms of like how they set up the onboarding process like was there anything beyond just the like sort of the general community knowledge of what the community form was or did they give you guys a little bit more detail about what to do how to interact things like that uh they gave us a little bit of guidance the, the onboarding process was just more or less they emailed me at the email address i put in on my application and they said hey we picked you send us your character name make sure you're logged into them on your forums you, you're only in the council on that character, and um, that was that was more or less it. They gave us a, a Discord, but they made it very clear that the 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 Discord is meant to be a 
place for like meta discussions and and if they want to talk about the game then go to the forums to do that and gotcha uh, even there have been a couple conversations that have gotten to game talk in that discord and like even the council members are in, in there like hey this is a topic for the forums go put it there um but it's meant as a more of a support thing for us uh, mm-hmm. and a way yeah. for us to talk. Um, they also mentioned that they plan, and I think they said something like this in the intro, that they also plan to have some live chats. Um, I think mostly public. I don't. They don't really want to do a whole bunch of talking to the council members in private about the game. They want that all to be public. They made that very yeah. clear, but they want to have us. Um, they want to have live chats with us and. They they don't know what the form yet is going to take for that. They don't know. A, a lot of this is very open-ended. And mm-hmm. they want the community to drive a lot of it. They want the... Sorry, the community council to drive a lot of it. They want... They want uh, a wide variety of perspectives. Um, not everybody who is is going to join the Discord. It's not required. Not everybody is necessarily even going to post an intro in the intro thread. But um, the people on the council can see the membership on the the forum, so we know who all is in it. But it, it's not something that I believe the player point of view can see that list. So it's yeah, up to the people sure. if they want to reveal themselves. We were given the option of any character to pick. So oh. if you if you wanted to be more anonymous, you could pick a no name alt. There there are problems with that. Like you could probably backtrack someone through pet collection and whatnot. But yeah. Um, and the EU people had to level a level 10 trial account to on NA. To <laughs> oh join. my gosh. They couldn't join on their EU characters. So there's no EU forum. Um, Classic is represented there. My opinion, they should have had two separate councils for the games, but I, I, I get why they're doing one. Probably another uh, scope thing and not wanting to overextend themselves. That's my Yeah, man, she thinks it once, yeah. But, uh, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, most of it, they do plan on posting their topics that they want some direct feedback on. But mm-hmm. um, eventually, they mentioned to us, but they they more or less want it to be kind of council driven and people to discuss things and um, in, in a mostly respectful but constructive way. Um, they they didn't make me sign anything. The uh, most of this is honor system and they're just telling us to, you know, they're, they're putting their trust in us. And, um, they very clearly went through applications and looked through people's followings if they were large influencers, 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 if I could speak yeah. today, um, making sure that you're not a dick more or less. <laughs> and, and, um, we didn't probably why I didn't get picked. <laughs> I didn't but, why. So, <laughs> So that's that's kind of where we're at there. Um, I've posted on a couple things. I, I want to focus more on Mythic Plus and rating, but I have a wide variety of game interests that I have represented that I want to put there. Okay. Um, I am definitely not the highest raider on 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 the uh, yeah. council. I know if you, I'm not going to out them because they haven't posted publicly, and that's their decision. If they want to post publicly or not, but there yeah. there are some raider like Iron CE ninth week of the tier this year. There are some that earned it a lot earlier on there. There yeah, are some high I've, end raiders on there. Heard I've heard some. Yeah, we'll say like yeah, top five U.S. type people. Uh, yeah, that have that have gotten in. So yeah, I mean, I, I, the the interesting part about the the council to me, and this will be something that I think will like. The interesting thing is that because Blizzard's providing very little direction at this point, I'm concerned that it essentially gives them an out to like ignore it, we'll say. Like, and this is sort of me just being kind of a little bit rude. And like to be fair, I applied. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a cool thing that they're doing, but leaving it so open-ended essentially just means like, oh, the players never commented on this, or they, you know, like it never got the same visibility. And I think just scrolling through, like I, I scrolled through last night as I was sort of pointing together notes about this and just looking at the number of topics, like it also seems like there's just a lot of topics for like the first week of this, right? In terms of like things that people have commented on, things that people like haven't commented on. It's a little all over the place. So I 
I don't know. I think the the cool thing is it sounds like they're leaving it pretty much up to the community to sort of like organize, but at the same time, they built the structure for this. So like, I feel like they should have a little bit more, maybe a little bit more of a hand in how it's sort of going. But I mean, yeah, I don't think there's a better way of them doing this. And I think to be fair, like, the so that's, that's my one comment, I think. And then the other side of it too, is I think a lot of people, particularly in discords, right, which is where you get a larger representation of like the top half of the player we'll say that the the more the hardcore more is the wrong right. word but the the more well the more like involved people like the more people who have spent more time at like a higher level in the game doing like mythic you know c type branding or even like high level pvp sit and a lot of times their most of their interaction with blizzard is on things that dictate that part of the game and so i saw somebody somebody posted about like player housing or there was another post too about some like something else that was not focused on like that high-end community and they're like why are they posting about this it was very much a like sort of like this is stupid this person like talks about high-end pvp but their character has like no high-end pvp knowledge or rating or whatever right um and like other topics that didn't directly talk about like class balance or systems and to be fair like that's not the the um the intent i think of this council is to talk about that stuff I think the intent is more, I think to, to brew your point, a more like holistic view of collecting content from like a bunch of different types of players, um, which then feeds into the fact that the forms all over the place, I think a little bit <laughs> in terms yeah. of top. But. I do think they'll provide, provide more direction and in, in some form, but yeah, we're, the the council the the Blizzard representatives that are on our that are our, co- our main contacts and the community all themselves are going to shape the future of this um they they don't really have a set idea of how they want this to be yet mm-hmm. that, that much is very clear and they've they've even admitted this to us <laughs> and but they do want to eventually provide live chat discussions um for some focused live feedback and talking they want to have their own threads that they'll start and want focused feedback mm-hmm. on they um they they want the ability for the council members to feel free to post about anything as well though and yeah it's kind of up to the council to also self moderate whether or not an idea is like not that a, if an idea has merit or not but whether or not it's something that like the best way to bring it up and if it's something that has a lot of interest with specific people that a lot of people have been asking like hey like I've been thinking about making this topic uh, and I have some preliminary ideas. Can I get some feedback? And that people were doing that in the council before posting the thread about it. There's been a lot That's of cool. disagreements already. Like people, one of the guys made a discord for himself to talk to the community and um, try to have more feedback for him to get for the council. And <laughs> that's a, a little, a little egotistical, my opinion, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't join that. I, I think that goes against the idea of it being public and it, not that the Discord's not public, but it's like a separate avenue where we don't have any Blizzard help to moderate us if we have trouble because that's they promise to support us in that regard in game right. and a, on the forums. Um, they like, I, I think if you have any discourse, it needs to be on the forums, and we've already had some discourse there. And I think that's what Blizzard wants: is they want healthy discussions. And I think that's a, I think this is a step in the right direction. But it's also like there are like sixteen different forks where it could go, and we don't know which one is going to go down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I have, I have a very important question here. Um, yeah. Has anybody has anybody brought up the subject of leveling yet? Not that I know of, other than Damn. maybe alts. Maybe I should have applied. Way. <laughs> we should <laughs> talk about it. I had one guy uh, DM me and ask if I could bring up issues with his. He he's having issues that there's no WoW server in his country, and the latency causes him to be unable to do his mage tower. And he asked me to bring that up. Uh, I I didn't know how to bring it up, and I haven't brought it up yet, but. It was something to think about. It's kind of cool getting people to message you and yeah. want to be earnest about their experiences. Yeah. I just can't wait till you say something, Rue, like slightly off. Like, hey, you, you, <laughs> you mentioned a post. You're like, this is a 10% buff. And the community's like, no, no, it's 8%. And then your DMs are just flooded with people. Like, you can't add. Like, 
just you're bad <laughs> at math just over and over again like that's that's really when the community form i think is working is what no offense i feel like there's a whole this whole like privacy and if, if this should have been as public as it should have been right like that this side of discussion but i'm really excited for the first time like somebody says something very controversial in the community forums and like that person is just inundated with like the stupid people in like our community that just are like guys it's eight percent not ten percent like how, how did this person make it to the council this is unacceptable blizzard is now has no idea what's going on it's ridiculous or like yeah something like that will occur and you yep. It'll it'll be fun. It'll be funny looking at it from the outside. Probably not funny for those going through it, but I will I will always enjoy when the community like freaks out about the smallest things. Particularly, we do a lot of it on each other, which I don't think is healthy. But it's always it'll be fun when that happens because like that's what that's the I think that's the biggest scare about this is the fact that like the the characters you guys chose like there is sort of a public face to this, and a lot of people I think aren't ready for that. Like aren't aren't understanding of that. Right? Like, like there's got to be a little bit of a thick skin. For these community folks so yeah it'd be fun to see how that part of it plays out it's a voluntary program and i think most people know knew to some degree what they were signing up for and yeah. anybody who got a late wave invite when the forums were already established because they, they definitely haven't like people still haven't read their emails i'm pretty sure based on the number of people in the 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 forum group of the council yeah. There are people who still haven't read their email who got in and don't know yet, or EU who haven't made their trial account, stuff like that. Um, I definitely think that those people, at a minimum, also know exactly what they're getting into now. And yeah. I, I am okay with like all that. If it becomes a problem, I'll resign and tell Blizzard like I'm done. But yeah. I don't foresee that being a problem. I have pretty thick skin. I laugh at people who do that kind of stuff to me honestly it's yeah not a big deal yeah. to me but i could see how someone might not necessarily be that way yeah. i think uh you probably have a pretty good grasp on what it entails anyway being that yeah. you're you know you've got a colored name in peak you already are dealing with some of that hopefully not yep. as much but it does happen from time to time like i've definitely had situations where i've you know done the foot in mouth moment and um got called oh, yeah. out by a bunch of random people over a period yep. of like weeks because for some reason people like scroll back up pages and pages and pages and brew questions and they will be like oh yeah this is wrong but somehow they didn't read the following four your times so i was told <laughs> that it was wrong yeah exactly well you gotta make sure you remember yeah, yeah right? of course <laughs> yeah. but um, i'm excited for the opportunities there i I think there's a good chance that this could be good. I, I could see why it might seem useless or not seem useless, but seem like it could lead to a road of uselessness Yeah. in yeah. some people's minds. But I'm I'm tentatively hopeful for this. I think, I think it's a the, good community. Uh, I think the real test of it will be when we get into new expansion, like beta stuff. Yeah. Because there's a lot I more room for bigger changes and bigger feedback than, you know, 9.2 yeah yeah the, there's uh there is the case where someone made a monk thread on it and they moved it to the ptr forum and they actually we had a discussion about this in the discord like a meta discussion about whether or not we, uh blizzard mm. to do that and the blizzard guys were like the, their their thinking was this is feedback on a timer and we want to like 9.2 ptr feedback is on a very a real timer and they wanted it in the place where the designers will most likely see it. And to me, that says they're not going to be looking at the council all day, every day. They're going to be setting specific times for it or rousing it in their off time. But it's not yeah. like one has a de dedicated slot every other forum and that's planned. It's, it's more like they're going to be there when they want focused discussions and they're going to peruse it to get general feedback and 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 stuff like that when they want specific to topics touched on they'll bring it up but like ptr feedback or beta feedback i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of it eventually gets moved out of council forums and into ptr forums just because of their the way they structure their their feedback and the way they spend their time so it, it's it's not like it's inappropriate to have it in the council forum. They they said explicitly it's fine. They just thought it was better placed in in the PTR feedback and they moved it there. 
They they said yeah, if their forum the infrastructure allowed, they'd rather just merge the threads so it's in in both places at once. But their 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 forums don't really support that. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Because, yeah. I, yeah. I, Blizzard doesn't either. Let's be real. They they don't know how they feel about that either. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, they did it because they thought it was the best way to do it, but that's there were it'll disagreements be, on that too. Yeah, but maybe, and that that brings up the point too as we get into maybe the next expansion where all that feedback goes, right? Because then you have like yeah, the same sort of kind of situation where it's either feedback from the council or is it feedback that goes into like the new systems discussion or at that point like the the uh, the beta or PTR discussion. So for the expansion, yeah, that's interesting. But I mean, I think yeah, I I think. I've said this before too about the council. You, I think you got to be at least somewhat optimistic. This is, will turn out well, but um, I, a lot of the cynical people that have been around, cause I follow a lot of them on Twitter have been like, this is like the third and fourth time blizzard has done this in terms of creating a space for player focused feedback. And they've eventually abandoned or, you know, moved into something else uh, in terms of its, in terms of like using something. So Hopefully this one being much more public than the others have been is helpful. And yeah, I mean, I hope to see, you know, I, the, the biggest thing that I think that, that I'd like to see is just that like we get like real blizzard responses again to things versus mm -hmm. just like their post your thoughts in this thread. And then six months later respond with, here's some changes we made. And it's like two lines, right? Like yeah. I think the, the biggest thing to me is a little bit more of a back and forth or just like not even back and forth, just like, if someone posts something about like player housing, like Blizzard asks questions about it, right? Doesn't even comment on like, we're going to do this or doesn't comment on anything like, hey, this is a good idea. More of just like, okay, understand, but what would you do in these situations? Or what are your thoughts about something like this, right? Yeah. Um, just to sort of show their reading and, you know, taking a look at it as all. Well, so to that end, yeah. they, they did say, and I think they mentioned this in the video, but they've also re reiterated to us, they, they want, not just developers of Blizz at Blizzard in in these forums looking at them and talking. They want environmental artists. They want encounter designers. They want engineers. They want all those people to feel free to browse the community forum and talk and with the community council and and all that stuff. Not just game designers. Not just um, not not just like QA looking for bugs or or yeah. designers looking for specific feedback in their feedback posts or they they yeah. want all different all different blizzard workers of any kind uh, all along the game stack uh, game development stack to be able to come in and have these discussions with the council on more than just gameplay more than just raid encounters more than just pvp encounters they yeah. want all different walks of experience of both blizzard and the community to be able to have uh, community council to have these discussions and they they made it seem like it's not just going to be filtered pr through like kyvax or bornak talking on behalf of other de developers they they want yeah. they want the actual developers to come in and be able to talk to the council that's cool that'll be fine cool cool so, well awesome. I'm hopefully that turns out well um i hope so it, the launch of it is kind of awkward timing with like Christmas coming up and the PTR being like, I guess actually the timing with, with respect to PTR is pretty okay um, because the PTR just came up, but yeah. Um, cool. We are running a little bit over time, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode uh, unless there's anything more that either of you want to touch on. I'm uh, good. No. Cool. The only thing uh, I want to say is if anybody has something that they want to talk about in the council i'm always my dms are always open cool I, I may or may not agree and we can have a discussion whatever but if you want to talk about something like that guy who sent me his issues with the mage tower latency and whatever if i can help i'm i'm glad to yeah cool um awesome i don't know whether i should put your discord tag in the show notes i don't think i'm going to do that i'll put your uh, your name will be in the show notes um, so people can find you on Discord with that. I feel like putting your Discord tag in there is maybe a step too far. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it for the show today. Uh, thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it or 
any of the other work that we put into Pika Serenity in the Discord or on the website, uh, you can support this by going to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Pika Serenity. Um, and of course, we encourage everybody, patrons or not, to come and join the Discord. Uh, the lounge channels are a great place to be. There's a lot of great information. Questions channels are active and get a lot of quick answers. Um, so generally a good place to be also there's people like counselor brew step in uh <laughs> in this discord uh brewmasters actually have a counselor too dalf got in uh which um he's not a he's not staff in peak i don't know if we're going to do anything with like a counselor role or something but um he's he's just a regular user he's he's hang, hangs out in the brewmaster channels i think he actually plays holy paladin right now though I think yes. being a regular user is 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 the point of the council, right? Yeah. yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, uh, that's all for the show today. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you next week. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Bye.